What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about triad pairs. <laughs> What are triad pairs? Just like the name implies, we are going to take two triads and pair them together and then play them in a pattern. So because there are a ton of different kinds of scales and every scale has seven notes, that gives us a whole bunch of triads that we could pair together. But because this is an intro to triad pairs, we are going to start off very simple and learn one ascending triad pair. And then once you learn that, pattern and you learn how these triad pairs go together, you can apply it to any other uh, triads that you would like. Okay, let's get started. We are going to play our triad pairs in the key of G. So we're going to play our G major scale. That's on an alto saxophone. On tenor, it would be C. And the concert instruments, that would be a B flat. So here is our G major scale. <laughs> to get started with our triad pairs, we are going to play diatonic triads on every note in the G major scale. Now that might sound like a lot of vocabulary, but we're going to break it down really easily. Diatonic means you're just going to stay in the original key. So all of our triads are going to be in the key of G. And triad just means one, three, five. So each chord or each note, you're going to build a chord using the first, third, and fifth. So the one chord in the key of G, your one triad, the triad on the one, would be G, G, B, D. The triad on A would be A, C, E. Now that would be A, C natural, E, because we are doing this di uh, in the diatonic key of G, so you have a C natural. It is not in the major key of A, which would be a C sharp. So we are playing again in the key of G. Your two chord or your two your triad on the two would be A C E. Your triad on the three would be B, and that'd be B D F sharp. The triad on the four would be C, and that'd be C E G. The triad on the five would be D, and that would be D F sharp A. The triad on the six would be E, and that'd be E G B. And our last triad would be on the seven, and that would be F sharp, and that'd be F sharp A, C. So I just played all of the di diatonic triads for you in the key of G. So that's a lot more information than you need to know for the triad pairs that we're gonna work on today. But I wanted you to understand that triad pairs come from uh, building chords, diatonic chords on the scale. In this case, we're using the major scale, but you can use any scale. You could use your major scale, you could use your Mixolydian scale, your Dorian scale, your natural minor scale, it doesn't matter what scale. And when we pair the two chords together, they are two uh, chords that are next to each other in the scale. So for our example, we are gonna use G and A. G is your one and A is your two, but you could do any, any two chords that are next to each other. So you could do two and three, or three and four, or four and five, five and six, six and seven, seven and one, any of them. They just have to be next to each other uh, in the scale. So for this example, we are gonna do uh, ascending triad pairs uh, on your one chord and your two chord. So ascending means they're gonna be going up, triad means it's your first, third, and fifth, and pairs meaning we're gonna be going back, back and forth between one chord and the next chord. So our first chord is going to be our one chord, which is G major, which is G, B, D. And our next chord is our two chord, which is A minor, A, C, E. When we're playing triad pairs, we go back and forth between each triad. We play the first triad, which is our one chord. Then we play our second triad, which is our two chord. Then back to our one, back to our two, back to our one back to or two, that's why they're called pairs. You put them together as if they're one thing. But let's break it down into really small pieces. So we are gonna start with our G chord, our one chord, which is G, B, D. Then right from there, we go to the two chord, which is A, C, E. Now, if we put those together, we have So that's our pattern. We're just going to go one, three, five, then switch to the other chord, one, three, five. And we're going to keep that pattern going. So we started on the one and we went one, three, five on G. And then one, three, five in A. 
And we're gonna keep the pattern going by going to the three and then playing our G chord. So we're gonna go B, D, G, which is your G chord starting on the third. And then do the exact same thing in the key of A on your A minor chord. So it'd be C, E, A. So the pattern so far is So we're going one, three, five in G, one, three, five in A. Then we're starting on our third and going three, five, one in G and three, five, one in A. So you can probably guess that the next one is gonna be started on the fifth. So we're gonna go five, one, three in the key of G, which would be D, G, B. And then we're gonna do five, one, three in A minor, which would be E, A, C. So here it is starting on the fifth, D, G, B. and on the fifth of A minor, which would be E, A, C. Now, if we put the whole thing together from the bottom, and those are your triad pairs. Uh, from there, we're gonna go back to the one, just an octave higher. So we're gonna play GBD with our octave key and then ACE with our octave key. Now ACE with our octave key. Now we're on our highest note that we can play in these chords on our saxophone. So we are just gonna finish it by going down the G triad just to finish it. So we're gonna play DBG at the end. So that last part, starting from the one, which would be GBD, and then ACE, and then come down DBG just so it sounds finished. Uh, here's what it sounds like. Now we're gonna finish it, DBG. And those are your triad pairs. So let's start it from the very bottom of the scale. So we're gonna go GBD, then ACE, then we're gonna do the same thing starting on the third, the same thing starting on the fifth, then we're gonna do the same thing starting on the one octave higher, and then we're just gonna finish it out playing DBG so it sounds finished because we ran out of notes when we got up to that high E. So here's what the whole thing sounds like. I'll finish it out, DBG. And those are triad pairs. It's just simply taking two triads and switching back and forth between them. Now this is obviously the most simple version of it. We're doing our one chord and our two chord, and we're just playing one, three, five, and switching back and forth. But you can use it on any uh, chords that are next to each other in your scale, and you can switch the pattern up. You can do ascending, you can do descending, you could do one three of one chord and five three of another chord. There's endless amounts of uh, combinations you can do with your triad pairs. But to get started, ascending one three five uh, is the easiest way to go. One three five with your one chord and your two chord. So once you get these down, ascending, then I would work on descending. Descend is a little bit more difficult because generally as saxophone players, as horn players, we think of our notes, uh, we think of our chords as going up. Uh, it's a little bit harder to start on the fifth and come down. But uh, once you get the pattern going up, the pattern coming down is gonna come really easy for you. So now what we just played did not sound that cool because we were just playing straight eighth notes. So what we wanna do is swing the eighth notes. And I'm also bringing out the, key, the chord change. So I'm bringing out the, I'm swinging the GBD and then when I go to the A, I bring out the A. And then when I go back to the G, I bring out the G. When I go back to the A, I bring out the A so that it has a lot of motion to it and it just flows better. Take a listen to it with the correct articulation. Triad pairs are also great chop builders. With my students, I use them as technique exercises. We'll do uh, triad pairs and we'll switch up the triads, obviously. We'll switch up the patterns 
and we'll start off slow and I'll get them moving faster and faster. So they're getting their ears used to switching those chords, playing two chords and paying attention to two chords at the same time, as well as getting their fingers moving really fast. So how do we use triad pairs when we're improvising? Uh, I explain it to my students as a really easy way to start playing outside of the changes. When we see like a G major chord or a G major seven chord or even a G seven chord, we look at that as just G, B, D. But if we're playing triad pairs, we're thinking of G, B, D, A, C, E and switching back and forth between those. So when you're doing the A, C, E, those notes fit this, the chord and the scale, but you're playing outside of the G, B, D. So it's a really safe and easy way to start playing outside of the changes. And obviously the better you get at it and the more obscure your triad pairs get, uh, the more outside of your chain, the more outside of the changes you can play and still make it sound really good. Now, what we just learned was a major triad pair. You can do triad pairs on any scale. You can do Dorian minor, you could do natural minor, you could do mixolydian, it doesn't really matter. You just have two rules that you have to follow, and that is rule number one, you have to play two chords that are next to each other in the scale, so one and two, two and three, three and four, so on and so forth, and you have to play in the key of the root. So all of your chords have to be in the key of the root. As far as the patterns, you can switch up the patterns as much as you want. You can go one, three, five, you can go three, five, one, you can go for the first chord, one, three, five, and the second chord, five, three, one, it really doesn't matter. That's the beauty of these triad pairs as you can come up with endless amounts of combinations, uh, which give you endless amounts of colors and sounds in your improvisation. If you're interested in digging deeper into triad pairs or any other part of playing the saxophone, I do give Skype lessons. My contact information is in the description below, so just hit me up and I will give you all the info. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Hopefully you now understand what triad pairs are and how to get started with them. If you do, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot.